Hi, my name is Stefan Amel, Digital Analytics Faculty Chair for Simply Learn. In my consulting practice, I get to work with amazing clients of various size, some startups and some established organizations, different verticals, different geographies, small and large digital analytics and digital marketing teams. Throughout the years, I've done a number of things like publishing the digital analytics maturity model and more recently the radical analytics manifesto. And I've developed tools and concepts that are recognized and renowned in the industry. I've played different roles, either on the agency side, on the client side. I've been advising to startups in the field and established organization in the digital analytics industry. I'm also speaking at different conferences uh, in Europe and North America, and I'm teaching for Simply Learn and other universities. Welcome to Advanced Digital Analytics. My name is Stefan Amel, Faculty Chair for Digital Analytics at Simply Learn. We're going to start with lesson number one, an introduction to digital analytics. We're going to start by defining the terms analytics and analysis. We want to look at the various types of analytics that we can do depending on our level of maturity and the type of business questions that we want to answer. And we're going to have a brief overview of how we're going to use Google Analytics in a real-life environment so that you can actually apply the concepts we're going to see throughout the course. Let's start by defining what is digital analytics. Simply put, digital analytics is the science of analysis with a greater focus on internet data. It involves the collection, the analysis, visualization, and hopefully data-informed decisions leading to the optimization of the organization, either the digital ecosystem, but we'll see that we want to expand that eventually to encompass more than just the digital ecosystem, but also any other supporting business processes that are involved in that digital ecosystem. So in the past, we were talking about web analytics, but this definition of web analytics was a little bit too centric around web data. Today, what we're looking at is digital analytics because it includes data coming from, of course, mobile applications, social media, and third-party uh, data source. But maybe more importantly, it also involves eventually connecting the behavior that you see throughout those different internet devices, be it web, mobile applications, social media, internet of things, and so on. But we want to tie that to core business data about customers and sales. So we have at our fingertip a lot of information coming from different data points. Um, we can combine that, that information with sales and customer so that we not only look at the marketing aspect of leveraging the data, but also any other business function that are involved in optimizing and understanding customer behavior, be it online or offline. So we're going to see in this course how we can use data to better inform business decisions. So why is digital analytics so important? Well, you, you could look at uh, your own experience. It's very, very useful. Uh, it's very valuable, but it's your own experience with all the bias, but also uh, the scalability issues. So you cannot transpose your own experience to other people. You can coach them, you can help them, but it, it remains your own experience. So digital analytics approach will help share that knowledge amongst your stakeholders and your colleagues. Faith is uh, sometimes you have a very, very strong belief that if we do this, the result should be that. But unless you actually measure it and test it, uh, you can't be sure. And it's very closely related to the third point, which is the assumption. Uh, it, it's quite possible that if you do A, the result would be B. That makes sense, right, in a given context. The problem is things are changing very rapidly. So what was true maybe a couple of months ago might not be true anymore. So we live in an era where we need to constantly measure, optimize, and adapt to the changing landscape. So in all those aspects, digital analytics is going to help you better understand better react and make decisions and share the knowledge and information you have about what's going on. 
So let's define what is analytics. Analytics is the science of analysis. So we're going to have to define what is analysis if we want to call it a science. So in the past, there were different definitions of what is digital analytics uh, from the Digital Analytics Association, from Avinash Kaushik and other people. But the one I prefer is this one. Analytics is how an organization arrives at an optimal and realistic decision informed by data. And what's nice about this definition is that we can clearly define each of those terms and why they are important in that definition. So let's look at organization. It doesn't matter if it's a, a private or a publicly traded company. It doesn't matter if it's a startup or a well-established organization. It doesn't matter if it's government, academic, profit or non-profit. It could even be a subgroup within a larger company. So we want to look at how this group, this organization, is able to leverage data to make better informed decisions. The how implies that there's a process, there's a workflow, there's a way to get there. We're trying to answer a specific business question. The arrives also implies that we start from somewhere and we want to get to an answer, a solution. The optimal and realistic are super important. The optimal is what would be the best solution regardless of the constraints. But realistically, there's always constraints of be it budget, resources, time, uh, tools, technology, uh, legal aspects, or just ethical aspects that come into play, and politics, of course. So we want to find a balance between what would be the best solution versus what realistically we can do. And oftentimes I see analysts making recommendations that would be fantastic, but there are so many constraints that realistically it cannot be done. So if we find the right balance between the two, there wouldn't be any excuse not to do it. The other term is informed. Uh, we often hear the term uh, data-driven, and I believe that uh, we should talk about being data-informed because the data itself doesn't make any decision. It doesn't do anything. We need to be informed in order to make a decision. And the data, notice that I don't mention digital data. I don't mention the source because, frankly, it doesn't matter where the data is coming from, as long as it's relevant and useful and appropriate to answer the business question we have. So it could be coming from the web, of course, but it could be coming from other sources like social media, uh, even competitive analysis, uh, and of course your back office systems. So if analytics is the science of analysis, what is analysis? Analysis is the process of breaking something complex into smaller parts, so that we can understand how it works. And if we understand how it works, we can measure it and we can optimize it. So this is going to be very important throughout the course because instead of aiming to optimize a single thing by a thousand percent, which would be very, very difficult, why don't we try to optimize a thousand things by just one percent each? So you could imagine that trying to optimize a single thing by a thousand percent is very risky the likelihood of succeeding is almost zero. While optimizing a lot of different things, a lot of smaller things, because you broke it apart into smaller parts, uh, you can easily go and improve by one person. And the effect of, the, of this approach, this more agile approach, is going to be that as soon as you start to provide a small one person improvement, there's going to be an exponential curve of all the improvements you're going to make over time. And you start basically to get the benefits sooner and faster because you're working on things that are easier to manage. So there are three super important elements of analytics. The first one, the very first one is what is the context of your analysis? What is the problem you're trying to solve? What is the opportunity you're trying to capture? The other one is data. Of course, you need data in order to understand what's going on measure it, make sense of it, find the patterns and the correlations and so on and help you make a recommendation that makes sense. And that's where you need to be creative because you, you cannot just look at your competitors and say, oh, look at what they are doing. We could do the same. No, you need to be more creative than that in order to do better. There's a lot of room for creativity in analytics and you need to be creative in the way that you find ideas for your recommendations. 
Now let's look at the different types of analytics. What you get out of a tool like Google Analytics is descriptive analytics. You can look at what happened. So you pick a date range, you look at a report, you understand what happened. So essentially anyone can go in a tool and get those numbers. Where you bring value as an analyst is in diagnostic analytics. You want to understand why it happened. So you're not looking at a tool, you're looking at the context of the business. You're looking at trying to make sense of all the data source that you can get. So already there, you move from a tool centricity and a channel centric approach of being web to something that would shift and try to understand why are my customers behaving in this way and not in the way that I expect them. Then this is still information. This is still very valuable to make better informed decisions. But as you grow in maturity, you're going to go into optimization and you're going to look at what may happen in the future. So you can do predictive analytics. You can even go beyond that and do prescriptive analytics. So when you reach that level of sophistication, there is obviously more value, but it's also more complex. So I think you need to master the, the first levels before you reach prescriptive analytics, where what you want to do is prevent bad things from happening and hopefully you know, capture the good things that could happen in the future. So keep in mind what's important here is that when you go into a tool and you get those reports, what you do is descriptive analytics. If you just provide those numbers, you don't have a lot of value. The value you bring is looking at why it happened and understand the conditions of why it happened and how you can optimize that. So is it really difficult to start in digital analytics? That's one of the questions I get very often. Uh, no, it's, it's really, really easy. There are free tools like Google Analytics that you can start with uh, and, and a lot of others. And you, so it's easy and affordable to start. But one of the things that you should do is assess your maturity level. What are your strengths and weaknesses? What are your understanding of the concepts of digital analytics? And we're going to talk more about uh, maturity in the upcoming lessons. But one of the key points is also to first focus on what you can control, manage, and influence. What you control are basically the tasks that you're supposed to do right now. Um, are you able to do those tasks efficiently? Do you have the right tools? Do you have the right knowledge? So this is great because it's an area we want to do what we preach. We try to measure and optimize the business. So maybe the starting point is to measure and optimize what we do in our own tasks as an analyst or as a marketer. Then manage, if you're in a management position, you are in charge of delivering some value to the organization. You are empowered to do it. So you can assign the resources in order to make it happen. And if you have some influence, uh, maybe you are considered as a, a subject matter expert. And those could be areas where eventually you could grow and have more influence and take more ownership or more uh, opportunities to do analysis for those other aspects of the business, regardless of what they might be. But the key point here is start with the things that you control, start with the things that you are already supposed to do and try to optimize those things uh, as your own job. Keep in mind that analysts are change agents, and we're going to come back to this topic later on in the course, but analysts are change agents. So imagine an organization that claims to be data-driven, but every time they are uh, presented some data and some facts, the, there's a lot of resistance to change and they don't change anything. So you would wonder, why do they do analytics in the first place? They are just wasting their time. So doing analytics implies that you are willing to take risks. You are willing to learn. You are willing to make changes. Otherwise, don't do it. So, of course, this course is not about Google Analytics. I will not show tricks and tips to use a specific tool. But we want to present you with the concepts of digital analytics. And there's, of course, a lot of things that we can show in the slides and so on. But one of the best way to learn is to actually try it. And uh, we're lucky to be able to use Google Analytics and the Google Merchandise Store, which is a real uh, live store selling goods and clothing 
and uh, gadgets and so on, branded items for Google. So you will have access to this data. Um, I really encourage, I strongly encourage you to uh, get ready, go into Google Analytics, learn about, uh, visit the Google Merchandise Store, play around with it, and you will have access to the data and I will help you um, go through the exercise of what we're gonna be presenting in each lesson. In order to get access to the Google Analytics data, the Google Merchandise Store, you can just follow that link and you will get all the instructions to access it. A couple of key takeaways for this first lesson. Analytics is only possible given a context, given access to some relevant data, and being creative in the way, not only the way you conduct your analysis, but also in the way that you make your recommendations. Analysis involves breaking a complex topic into smaller parts. This will help you understand, measure, and optimize. Digital analytics is not only about the web. It's about understanding business context, again, getting the right data. And oftentimes, yes, the data is coming from the web, but it's certainly not the only source of data that you might need in order to do your analysis and understand the business process and make better informed decisions. The field of digital analytics has grown to be very complex. So one way to overcome that complexity is really to, instead of trying to change the world and change the whole organization that you're involved with, start by the things that you control and try to optimize that before you venture into influencing more changes in the organization. Use a digital analytics maturity assessment to find what are your strengths and weaknesses. And from that, you're going to be able to create a better roadmap, a more realistic roadmap. So we're going to look at the maturity assessment in one of the upcoming lessons.